Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Saturday, everybody. First of all, I am recording today's episode from my hotel room, so the acoustics may be suboptimal. There is a little bit of noise outside, but hopefully, it's not too distracting. My apologies in advance. Before we jump into the main developments, which, as it is Saturday, will be very foreign policy focused, I wanted to briefly supplement what we discussed in yesterday's video. Yesterday, we discussed new disappointing data published by the National Bureau of Statistics on Thursday, and what the implications mean for the growth outlook and the stimulus debate. If you haven't seen the video and you are interested in this topic, I would highly recommend giving it a look. Just to supplement this deep dive from yesterday, we have a few extra points to look at here. Major banks, even assuming that there will be stimulus, have now revised down their China growth forecasts for 2023, cutting their forecast from 5.9% to 5.5%. J.P. Morgan economists, in a Thursday note, expressed, "quote The general softness in May activity data highlights softness in domestic demand." End quote. UBS made an even bigger revision, cutting its previous 5.7 percent to 5.2 percent. Nomura Holdings cut theirs lower too, from 5.5 percent to 5.1 percent, telling clients in a research note yesterday, "quote Stimulus measures may not turn things around due to weak confidence, negative sentiment, the huge fiscal cliff due to the collapse of land sales, clogged transmission channels, a shrinking toolbox, slow decision making on economic matters." And conflicts among multiple targets. End quote. Okay, now let's move to foreign policy for the rest of the day's video, and we are back in Europe for EU-China developments. Regular viewers will be very familiar with the general state of affairs of EU-China relations. Let's move through the developments now. China's new premier Li Qiang is traveling to Europe tomorrow. Sunday, Li will be in Germany for the seventh China-Germany intergovernmental consultation. After which he will travel to France to attend the summit for a new global financing pact. This comes as Germany publishes a new security strategy document this week, which, as we saw, employs its most assertive language towards China to date, calling China a partner, a competitor, and a systemic challenger. Yesterday, People's Republic of China Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin described the current state of China-Germany relations. And unpacked Beijing's expectations for the trip. Quote: In recent years, the China-Germany all-round strategic partnership has grown at a high level. Premier Li Qiang has chosen Germany as the first stop of his first overseas visit since taking office. This fully shows the importance China attaches to its relations with Germany. In a world facing more turbulence, sluggish economic recovery, and more global challenges, China hopes to deepen and expand its relations with Germany. And together, send a positive message of enhancing dialogue and cooperation, pursuing mutual benefit, jointly responding to challenges, and contributing to world economic prosperity, peace, and stability. End quote. So we can see Beijing is choosing to rhetorically, at least, look past the hardening security concerns of the Germans and focus on the economic opportunities. This makes sense, as we have seen in previous videos. The consensus in Beijing seems to be that China cannot be cut out of the U.S. market and the EU market at the same time. However, sometimes the economic and the security cannot be separated. A painful truth: Chinese technology giant Huawei learned once again this week on Thursday. The European Commission, the bloc's secretariat, announced at a press event that it has told its members to ban Huawei Technologies as well as ZTE, another Chinese technology giant, from their 5G networks ASAP. Here is the reasoning. Quote, the Commission considers that decisions adopted by member states to restrict or exclude Huawei and ZTE from 5G networks are justified and compliant with the 5G toolbox. Consistently with such decisions and on the basis of a broad range of available information, the Commission considers that Huawei and ZTE represent, in fact, materially higher risks than other 5G suppliers. End quote. In 2022, Brussels recommended that its 27 members strip so-called high-risk suppliers out of their networks. On Friday, the People's Republic of China Foreign Ministry slammed the move as a quote, "typical presumption of guilt without any evidence." End quote. 
and urge the EU to, quote, comply with international trade rules, stay clear of overstretching the concept of security and politicizing such concepts, and not suppress foreign companies, end quote. Of course, it is common practice to restrict technologies and national infrastructure suspected of being of high risk, and China has never shied away from such moves itself. The EU has limited authority to force members to comply with these bans in the name of national security, and each member will ultimately need to decide how they wish to proceed themselves. The Anglophone nations of the UK, Canada and Australia have already banned Huawei from their 5G networks for some time now. And of course, so has the US, which will be lobbying EU nations to adopt this European Commission directive. While Beijing likely will not be happy with this development, next up we will see that there could be even bigger waves on the horizon. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit that like button. It's just me making these episodes every day, it's a lot of work, but your guys' support is a huge source of motivation. Subscribing and sharing is a huge help as well, and for those who can go the extra mile and help me keep the channel financially sustainable, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. Thank you so much, everybody, for the ongoing support. Finally, this week the Chinese are receiving a lesson in French culture, which many in the West are all too familiar with. Liberty, equality, fraternity, and protectionism. Of course, to our French viewers, I'm just joking, but for some time now, there has been an increasing concern within Europe towards Chinese EV sales on the continent, with Paris providing strong impetus. In a speech last May, French President Emmanuel Macron expressed, quote, We must not repeat in the electric car market the mistakes we made with other industries, where we created a dependency on Chinese industry and made its manufacturers prosper. End quote. Then this week, in an article titled France Presses EU to Declare Trade War Against China, US-based media outlet Politico writes that France is ratcheting up pressure on Brussels to hit back against what it sees as China's unfair advantages in export sectors such as electric vehicles. But the EU is wary about the risks of triggering an all-out trade conflict with Beijing. The most controversial French idea, the outlet writes, is that the EU should open a probe paving the way for tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. The main European fear is that Beijing can use lavish state support to churn out unfairly cheap vehicles that can flood the EU market at a speed and scale that threaten the EU's own e-car production. In a separate article, an EU internal market commissioner told the outlet in an interview, quote, I am very much in favour of opening a dumping investigation into electric cars as soon as possible. The rapid increase in imports has become a problem for EU industry. End quote. These French impulses are being counterbalanced by German concerns that any EU restrictions will be met with a corresponding Chinese response. German car makers are much more exposed to the Chinese EV market, the largest in the world, than French businesses. And of course, the US will also see this as an excellent opportunity to advance its own competition with China. On Thursday, US Trade Representative Catherine Tai expressed, quote, Sympathy for European Union concerns about surging electric vehicle imports from China, end quote, adding that the situation seems to, quote, echo what has happened in the past, end quote, in other important industrial sectors. Quote, the backlash to the rise of the PRC auto industry may be coming faster than some expected, especially as exports to the EU surge and will likely increase even more later this year, after the current round of domestic car purchase subsidies that will pull demand forward ends and the car makers will be even more in need of overseas markets. End quote. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Have a lovely Saturday, a relaxing weekend, and I will see you all back here for a new week of China Update on Monday.